Let's have a closer look now at what happens when we add together waves of different frequencies. In this case I've got a blue sine wave and I'm going to add to that a red sine wave. And we see at some points they are in phase and they'll add up and give constructive interference. At other points they're out of phase and this will give us destructive interference. So if we add them up we get something that looks like this. Some places it's big, twice the size of the original waves, in other places it cancels out and we get something close to zero. Now this phenomenon is known as a beat, and the, the difference between the two frequencies that gives us this modulated signal is called a beat note. So the frequency of this modulated signal is a, called the beat note. In this example we have 10 blue wavelengths for every 11 red wavelengths. What that means is that every 10th blue wavelength the interference condition repeats and you'll get constructive interference. So if we count it along 10 blue wavelengths here, we start off with constructive and over here we get constructive again. And in between you have destructive interference. Now a neat physical example of beats that you may have seen are those you see at the beach. If you're sitting out waiting for a wave to come, if you're surfing, sometimes you find that the surfers pancake flat and then a few minutes later you're being rolled by some enormous waves that you didn't see coming. The reason for that is beating, interference between waves of different frequencies. If you add up all the different waves in the ocean, they have lots of different wavelengths, lots of different frequencies. Sometimes they add up constructively, like these times with the red arrows, and sometimes they add up destructively, so you get periods of very small wave amplitude, and periods of very large wave amplitude depending on how these different waves of different wavelengths and frequencies add up. Now the ocean is much more complicated than this example with two simple sine waves, and so the beat is not regular. In this particular example, the average time between constructive interference, so the sets, is 8.8 .8 minutes, but that's just for this example. It depends on where the different storms are and what's generating the waves as to how frequent the sets are or how big the contrast between the constructive and destructive interference will be. Nevertheless, if you've ever wondered where sets come from when you're surfing, that's uh, beating between waves of different frequencies. Here's an example of an acoustic beat note. We're going to play two different frequencies on top of each other, one at 1000 hertz, the other at 1002 hertz. We turned on, we hear this rather irritating sound. The frequency you hear is 1001 hertz, so it's the average of these two frequencies, but it's being modulated, it's turning on and off at a rate of 2 hertz, which is the difference between these two frequencies. If I change the beat frequency to say 1 hertz, now it's turning on and off at a frequency of 1 hertz. And again, the carrier underneath is the average of these two frequencies, which is 1000 0.5 hertz in this case. So I've done beats qualitatively, now let's get quantitative and do a little bit of maths. We want to look at the sum of two different frequencies. So we've got a sine omega 1 here and sine omega 2, so these are our two frequencies. I've chosen sine functions here, but it's an arbitrary choice. You could do uh, similar maths with any choice of sine or cosine functions. And I've allowed a phase shift here just to keep things general, but we'll see that doesn't really matter very much. So what we actually want to do is write this function f of t not as a sum of two different frequencies, but as a product of two frequencies. And for this choice of sine functions, we can use this trigonomic relation. That is that sine a plus b plus the sine of a minus b can be written as a product of uh, sine a and cos b. So to take our function f of t, into this form here, what we need to do is write omega 1 times t as a plus b and omega 2 times t plus phi as a minus b, which gives us these two equations here to solve for a and b. And doing this, we get these equations here for a and b, and substituting in, we can now write our function f of t as a product of a sine and a cosine. Now there's something interesting going on here. If you consider that these two frequencies um, uh, well, we're going to consider frequencies that are close together, so omega 1 and omega 2 are quite close to each other, then this cosine function here will take on a very small frequency because we have the difference in frequency here divided by 2 is giving us the frequency of this cosine function. Whereas for the sine function we have the sum of the frequencies divided by 2, so in other words the average of these two frequencies is the frequency of this sine function. Let's now take an example, the example being omega 1 is 2 pi times 1002 radians per second, omega 2 is 2 pi times 1000 radians per second, 
which means that omega, this frequency here uh, is 1002 hertz, and this frequency here is 1000 hertz. Substituting in to our function f of t using this equation here and setting the phase shift to zero, we get a sine wave going at 1001 hertz multiplying a cosine wave going at only 1 hertz. And this is because this sine function here has a frequency which is the average of omega 1 and omega 2. You can see omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by 2 which gives us the average of these frequencies. Whereas the cosine here has got a frequency of half the difference, omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by 2. Now these two frequencies have some names. The carrier frequency is the average of the two frequencies. So this is our carrier frequency here. And the envelope frequency has half the difference of the frequency. So this is the envelope frequency here. So carrier frequency and envelope frequency. Envelope frequency is sometimes also known as the modulation frequency. So these names, the carrier frequency and the envelope or modulation frequency, actually have more relevance if we're thinking about this signal, this function, as a radio transmission. In particular, an amplitude modulated radio transmission. That's the AM part of your radio. So in a concrete example, in Canberra, if you're listening to Radio National, the carrier frequency for Radio National is 846 kilohertz. So that would be the carrier frequency, that's the frequency you tune your radio dial to. The modulation bit, well in this example here it's just a really boring cosine wave that you wouldn't want to listen to, and in fact you couldn't because the frequency is only 1 hertz and you can't hear it anyway. But if this was a radio transmission, instead of multiplying by this cosine wave, you would multiply the carrier by the signal of your voice or the music or whatever it is you want to listen to. And so then the radio waves that are uh, flying through the atmosphere at the speed of light would be this high frequency carrier wave multiplied by this slow modulation. And so you have a, a wave with a beat in it, and the beat is given by the information that you're sending. When it arrives at your radio at the other end, what the radio does is it demodulates. That means it strips out this carry frequency and leaves behind the modulation, which is the thing that you want to listen to. So here I've plotted the beating again on a graph. So this brown wave, this fast one here, the frequency of that is the carry frequency, and the slow blue is the envelope. But if we look at this signal, what we see is that the period of the beat the period of the beat here seems to be twice the period of the envelope because when the envelope multiplies the carrier you get some beating when the envelope is positive and you see some beating when the envelope is negative and everything cancels out when the envelope goes through zero. So now the envelope frequency here is omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by 2 but the period of the beating that you hear is twice that because every time this signal recurs, you'll hear something. You hear nothing in the middle here, but you hear something, whether this beat is multiplied by the positive part of the envelope or the negative part. So when you hear the beat, the frequency here is the difference in the two frequencies, not the difference divided by two, but what you hear is just the difference in frequencies. So the frequency of the audio beat as you perceive it, in this case, would be twice the envelope frequency.